1988, scuba divers exploring the waters off Sardinia stumbled upon an ancient Roman shipwreck, its hull buried beneath sand and seaweed. Inside, they found a treasure trove of artifacts, including over 1,000 lead ingots, each stamped with markings revealing the names of Roman citizens and trade networks from over two millennia ago. While these ingots were crafted for practical use in ancient Rome, they now serve an entirely unexpected purpose. Scientists have repurposed the ship's cargo to shield one of the world's most advanced physics experiments, deep beneath the mountains of Italy. Could these relics from the past hold the key to understanding why the universe exists at all? The story of this ancient Roman shipwreck begins over 2,000 years ago, beneath the shimmering waves of the Mediterranean Sea. This particular wreck wasn't discovered until much later, 1988 to be exact, when a group of scuba divers, exploring the seabed off Sardinia, stumbled upon something extraordinary. About 28 meters below the surface, buried among the sand and seaweed, lay the remains of a Roman ship. At first glance, it looked like just another piece of history lost to time. But as the team dove deeper, literally and figuratively, it became clear that this shipwreck was hiding something special. The wreck, located near a small island called Mal de Ventra, sat quietly under the water. Mal de Ventra, which loosely translates to bad winds, may have been a fitting name. Perhaps those winds played a role in the ship's fate. What remained of the vessel was mostly its keel, preserved under the sand. Most of the wooden hull had long since been eaten away by the sea. Yet what survived told a fascinating story. This was no ordinary Roman ship. It was massive, with a length of about 30 meters and a width of about 9 meters, roughly the size of nine school buses parked in a tight grid. It belonged to a class of merchant ships built to carry heavy cargo, known as Novus Honoraria Magna. The team found signs of everyday life aboard the ship. Jars for storing food, wine, and water, even a millstone the crew had likely used to grind grain during long voyages. But the most remarkable discovery lay at the center of the wreck, a cargo of over a thousand lead ingots stacked neatly as if waiting for their next destination. These ingots, trapezoidal in shape and about the size of a human forearm, each weighed a staggering 33 kilograms. Together, the cargo weighed more than 33 metric tons. Why was there so much lead on this ship? In ancient Rome, lead was essential. The Romans used it for everything from coins to pipes to anchors. They even used it to line their famous aqueducts, which carried water across vast distances. But what made lead even more attractive was that it often came with a bonus, silver. Roman miners extracted both metals from a mineral called galena, and even if they were after the silver, they'd end up with lead as a byproduct. The inscriptions on the ingots told their own story. Each one was stamped with the names of the people or businesses responsible for producing them. One stamp identified a company owned by two Romans, Marcus and Gaius Pontanilius, who had produced over 700 of the ingots. Another mark referenced someone named Philippus, believed to be a tribute to a deceased servant. These stamps offered archaeologists a glimpse into how the Roman Republic managed its mines through private businesses rather than direct state control. The inscriptions also helped date the shipwreck. Since the names of reflected Roman citizenship granted to Italian tribes after 89 BCE, the ship must have sailed after that year. But how did this mighty vessel end up on the bottom of the sea? The clues suggest two possible scenarios. One theory is that the famously unpredictable winds around Mal de Ventra may have destabilized the ship's heavy load, causing it to sink. Another possibility is more dramatic. The Roman Republic was in turmoil during this period, with civil wars and pirate attacks threatening ships at sea. Some researchers believe the ship's crew might have deliberately sunk it to prevent its valuable cargo from falling into enemy hands. Whatever the cause, the ship and its precious cargo remained untouched for two millennia. And here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. The lead ingots weren't just valuable to archaeologists, they also caught the attention of physicists. Why would physicists care about ancient Roman lead? The answer lies in the universe's deepest mysteries. Modern scientists are still trying to figure out why the universe exists as it does. According to current theories, when the universe was born, it should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter. 
But matter and antimatter annihilate each other when they meet, leaving behind only energy. If they had been perfectly balanced, there wouldn't be stars, planets, or people. There'd be nothing. Yet here we are. Somehow matter won out. For every billion pairs of matter and antimatter particles, there was one extra particle of matter left over. These leftover particles became everything in the universe. But why did this happen? One possible explanation involves neutrinos, subatomic particles so small and elusive they can pass through entire planets without interacting with anything. Trillions of them are passing through your body right now. Scientists believe neutrinos might hold the key to understanding why there's more matter than antimatter in the universe. Here's where the Roman lead comes in. To study neutrinos, researchers need environments free of modern contamination. Modern lead is too noisy because it's slightly radioactive thanks to centuries of exposure to cosmic rays. But the lead from the Maldaventra shipwreck had been shielded underwater for over 2,000 years, making it uniquely quiet and perfect for experiments. Scientists used some of the ancient ingots in an experiment called CUOR, short for Cryogenic Underground Observatory for Rare Events. Located deep beneath the Apennine Mountains in Italy, CUOR was designed to detect an incredibly rare phenomenon called neutrinoless double beta decay. If this event exists, it could prove that neutrinos are their own antiparticles, meaning they can switch between matter and antimatter. And if that's true, it might explain the imbalance between matter and antimatter that allowed the universe to form. But here's the catch. Neutrino-less double beta decay has never been observed before. It's so rare that if it does happen, it's an event that takes an extraordinary amount of time, far longer than the age of the universe. That's why scientists needed an experiment as sensitive and elaborate as Kuor to even attempt to detect it. The setup was meticulous. Kuor, which stands for the Cryogenic Underground Observatory for Rare Events, was a massive leap in experimental physics. The heart of the experiment consisted of nearly 1,000 blocks of tellurium oxide crystals, each about the size of a Rubik's Cube. These crystals were arranged into tall towers and placed in the coldest cubic meter in the known universe. How cold? Around minus 273 degrees Celsius, just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. To achieve this, scientists used liquid helium to cool the crystals, similar to blowing on a hot bowl of soup. If your soup happened to need to stay cold enough to make outer space seem warm by comparison. This extreme cold was crucial because it allowed the crystals to detect even the faintest signals of neutrinoless double beta decay. If such an event occurred, the tellurium would release a tiny burst of energy, causing the crystals to heat up by barely a measurable amount. But there was another problem. The crystals needed to be protected from any outside interference. Even a slight background noise from cosmic rays or radioactive particles could drown out the faint signal scientists were looking for. That's why Kuor was built 1.4 kilometers beneath the Apennine Mountains. The thick rock above served as a natural shield, blocking most of the cosmic radiation. Still, the rock itself was slightly radioactive, which brought its own challenges. To shield Kuor from this radiation, scientists lined the experiment with thick layers of lead. But not just any lead. It had to be ancient lead, free from modern contamination. And this is where the Roman shipwreck's lead ingots become invaluable. Modern lead contains small amounts of radioactive isotopes due to exposure to cosmic rays and other sources over the past few centuries. But the lead from the Roman shipwreck, buried beneath the Mediterranean Sea for over 2,000 years, was uniquely stable and pure. It had been shielded from cosmic rays by the seawater and sediment, making it the perfect material to protect Kuor's sensitive detectors. The scientists struck a deal with the archaeologists working on the shipwreck. In exchange for a portion of the lead ingots, specifically the ones that were the least well-preserved, the physicists funded the continued excavation of the wreck. It wasn't an easy decision for the archaeologists. Once the ingots were melted down for the experiment, they'd be gone forever as historical artifacts. But they feared that if they didn't act quickly, the wreck might be looted and its treasures lost entirely. So the excavation resumed, and over the years, hundreds of relics were brought to the surface. The best-preserved ingots were sent to museums, while the rest were handed over to the physicists. 
the low background lead was melted down and transformed into a protective shield for Kuor. By 2017, Kuor was fully operational. For the next several years, the experiment ran continuously, monitoring the tellurium crystals for any sign of neutrinoless double beta decay. Scientists kept the entire setup at its near absolute zero temperature and ensured that every piece of equipment worked perfectly. It was a waiting game, one that required extraordinary patience and precision. In 2024, Kuwar's results were finally released. The experiment had not detected any evidence of neutrinoless double beta decay. At first glance, this might seem like a failure, but in science, even a lack of results can provide valuable information. Kuwar's findings set new limits on how rare this decay process must be, so rare that it might take longer than the age of the universe for a single event to occur in a given sample. And while Kuwar didn't solve the mystery of neutrinos, it paved the way for future experiments. Its successor, Cupid, is already in development. Cupid will use advanced crystals that are even more sensitive than those in Kuor, improving the chances of detecting neutrinoless double beta decay. And thanks to the lead shield provided by the Roman ingots, Cupid won't need to start from scratch. The Roman shipwreck near Sardinia has given us more than just historical insights. It has connected the ancient world with the cutting-edge science of today, helping us explore questions about the very nature of the universe. Maybe one day, experiments like Kuwar and Cupid will uncover the secrets of matter, antimatter, and the origins of everything we know. Until then, this remarkable blend of history and science reminds us that the past and the future are always connected. So, if you enjoyed this journey into the depths of history and the cosmos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future explorations. Who knows what other ancient discoveries might change the way we see the universe.